Hi, it's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Sheet Metal in Charlton, Massachusetts. And finally, we got back to doing the E-Type nose. Mark was on vacation. I had some issues I had to deal with, some uh, last minute uh, jobs that had to be finished. And here we are, we left off with a little explanation of what the flexible shape pattern is. We mentioned the gauges and uh, a lot of people commented about how do you make a gauge. So in this video, instead of going right into the metal, uh, what we're going to do is show you how to make a gauge. So we'll make a gauge off of, say, this one right here. This is where uh, gauge number five will be going. Now we're going to do this gauge number five, which starts here and comes around and ends right there. Now, what that is essentially is a station buck. If that was a wood buck, that would be where the station would be. Uh, we arbitrarily put these in, but they do have a purpose. They have a certain spacing and stuff. But, you know, I could be a half inch over this way or half inch over that way. It's not going to make that much of a difference. So now, how do I get this piece of cardboard fitting? So first thing you got to do is you've got to be able to mimic the shape to start off with. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to draw that just like that. So there's my idea of what that shape looks like. Now this is actually a pretty difficult one because you've got to make this little cut out here. Now you want to leave enough strength here so this end piece has some strength. You want some strength up here so you want to make your cardboard big enough. Now years ago when I invented this system I used to shear 5 8 strips of 18 gauge or 19 gauge steel and then take a shrink of stretcher and bend them the hard way and it made them a really nice gauge but it took a long time and the gauges need a lot of information on them. You need that number five, you need panel number two, you need a little storybook like here saying that it's for E-type otherwise you end up with thousands of gauges laying on benches and you have no clue what they mean. That has happened so we try to be uh, pretty diligent in getting that information on every gauge. Not only do you put it on one side, you put it on the other side too because you don't want to have to keep craning your neck around the thing to find out what gauge it is and where it's supposed to be. Every gauge has an index point. This one has an index point right here. So first thing I'm going to do is I've got this approximately how I think that's supposed to go. And that gets me into the game. Now I'm going to cut that out with a razor. I can cut it out with a jigsaw or a bandsaw also. But just a standard razor knife should work pretty good. Alright, so here we are on a wood bench. And we're going to cut this out with the razor knife. So there's our starting point. I guess your results might vary a little bit. <laughs> um, I've been playing with shapes for a long time, so I can estimate approximately where things are. So I have a black pen. I got a lot of black marks on here. I don't want to use the black pen now because I want to refine this line just a little bit. Now I could actually sand this one in, but I'll give it, I'll try with the pen with a red pen. Let me go get a red pen. All right, so now I have the red pen. And I'm going to take the red pen and I'm going to lay it on here like this. And I just rub it all the way around. You see I've got a deficiency I hear of the angle I came off on the wrong angle. So I'm going to recut that again now. So now I'm going to cut the red line out. And a bandsaw actually works better than the razor. The bandsaw is a more refined cut. We have a bandsaw with a quarter inch wide blade and it cuts these very nicely. Now we're going to sand with 80 sandpaper also. That gives you the fine fit. So next we'll go maybe one more cut or maybe just sand it in. All right, so we're going to give it one more.
go back and try it. Okay, we're fitting pretty close now. Um, we got a little gap here. If I cut this to length, I usually like the gauges to end where they're supposed to end. So this gauge is going to be ending right here. So I'm going to chop that off right there. And it's supposed to be ending right there. And I'll chop that off there. And then we'll see how that works. All right, so the gauge is fitting pretty decent now. Coming right around. You always put the gauges at 90 degrees to the surface and it's cut off at the ends. There is a little bit of gap from here, from here to here. To solve that, you take and just sand where it's hitting a little bit. I don't have to spend too much time fitting this in. We don't really need this gauge. This is just to show you the process. So you would just sand the, the spots where it's touching until it touches completely. Now, the gauge ends here, the gauge ends here. We got plenty of material to write our story on. What do we want to do? First we want to do is make sure we have an index point. So there's our index point right there. And we're going to tick that off right here at the same spot. And then we'll bring that over to the other side here. So there's our little tick. Now where does that come into play? That comes into play when you roll this edge, if you don't have that edge rolled properly, then this won't line up. If that edge is too far out, the tick mark is going to be out. So that tells you a lot. So you have to have the, that index mark. Now, you can also use these roll zone marks as indexes. We can do that later too. We can put a, an index and that will give us an idea of how we're progressing with that roll. We get to the point of arranging that roll in there. So this is gauge number five. So on gauges I've developed a system. I put number five. All my gauges always have underscore under them so I can distinguish what that means. And then I have orientation, number five orients right there. Then again, I put all the same information on the other side. There. Now, this is for panel number two. Panel numbers, I always have a circle and a number two here, because we're panel number two. Circle number two. Then I usually have a green pen. I don't have a green pen right with me, and I'll do the little storyboard. I put a little square, 1962 Jaguar E-type front bonnet, front section, as much as you want. Put it on both sides. Poke a little hole in here, and they can be hung. All right, so I hope that explains how to make a gauge. These gauges will literally last forever. You can hang them with the flexible shape patterns on your garage wall. And you can literally make hundreds of, of panels, accurate panels. Where this comes in really good is restoration. And you've got a, a rusted out uh, panel on, on one side. The other side's not as bad. You take the information from the good side and you, you correct uh, the bad side and then eventually fix even maybe the good side might have some problems. So this information is uh, like solid gold. You can actually make a panel from just the gauges without a flexible shape pattern, but what the flexible shape pattern adds to the gauges is it um, tells you exactly where it, it, it localizes where that gauge is supposed to be. Now how does it do that? Well we, you see all these gauge lines in here so we're making a panel and now how do we get these gauge lines onto the new panel? Well, That's another thing that I haven't showed you yet is we're going to punch holes along all these gauge lines so when we make the panel we take a magic marker and these little holes that we're punching in, we're going to go dash, 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 and then we transfer all this information. Gauge number three goes right here. So that index is in properly with gauge number three and gauge number five and so forth go. So that's the way we're going to do that and I'll show you how that works. Okay, now we're going to punch these holes where the gauge has got to go. And We've got a little 
uh, leather punch. These, this one happened to come from Harbor Freight. Uh, they sell them pretty cheap. Uh, standard ball peen hammer. And we're just going to try to center ourselves on the lines. That's important. And then every three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeter or so, give or take a little bit. We're just going to punch along the line. I generally don't try to punch the intersections. It's good to keep those in intersections whole. And you know, you can get a little wider spacing, a little tighter spacing. It's not going to make much, much of a difference. But what this does, it gives you the ability to very accurately index all of the gauge locations where they go. This is an external station buck, essentially what we're making with the gauges. We don't need access to the internal. There's so many cars that uh, if you're copying the part, there's all kinds of stuff in the way on the inside. Uh, always the outside of the car is available to you. So external station buck makes a lot of sense. So all along the gauges and now the index points, what I do on that is I'll punch a hole on either end of the little index points for where the gauges go. So this is the index, uh, index point for gauge number 12. So I've got that mark. So now when I put that gauge on my panel, I'll tick it off here and tick it here. And then I'll make a little line going across with a little straight edge. And I know that that's where gauge number 12 has to index. And this is the weld indexing line. And that has punched holes in it also. I got that done. So there's quite a bit of punching. This is a gauge over here. This is on, uh, an index uh, point for a gauge. There's quite a bit of punching you have to do to get this all right. Now, a lot of people, instead of using this correct tape, which I sell on my website, uh, which is translucent, all that information is transferred to the other side, so it allows you to flip it. In this case, we're not doing the flip. We actually made a left and a right, but it allows you to flip it so that you can only have to make one side of something and then flip it over. And you only have to make the gauges on one side and then flip them over. And that really ensures a really good symmetry also. So a lot of people have tried using this uh, blue tape which is readily available. It's a low stick tape, but it's not translucent. And that translucence is very important. A lot of people have tried using uh, saran wrap. Saran wrap as the first layer of the, uh, of the flexible shape pattern. I've tried it, it's not a good deal. Someone said that they used aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is not a good deal. It's not translucent. It doesn't really stick as well as the tape. Once you use one of these things, uh, it, you'll be hooked on it. I had a class, both the four-day uh, class and my three-day finishing class this uh, past week, and two guys stayed all the way through. I gave the 130 hours class special, so they stayed from the like almost two weeks here to, to utilize their whole 130 hours in one, one go. So uh, they were intrigued by the flexible shape pattern and I, I showed them the flexible shape pattern and they said, well, geez, we'd like to try to make that E-type nose too. So I said, great. And um, so I says, well, I really don't want you to use my, my flexible shape pattern because I haven't used it in a video and I didn't want them beating it up because it'd be the first time that they're using it. So I didn't want it to get ripped or something. So they actually made another flexible shape pattern off of the E-type uh, nose and they made uh, the aluminum panels and, and both, uh, it was uh, Rich and Nate and they both made one side. They flipped their panel uh, over and they, they both made one side and they got it ready to be, almost be to be welded. Now in the process of making their panel, they uh, came up with the problem of how to put this curl in. Well, as far as the complexity of this E-type bonnet, it's this opening right here, this grill opening with this curl, which has initially a shrink, uh, 
and then to get it over center then there's a, an actual stretch on this edge so this has a lot of complexity this is a light tight little radius here and uh, with the flexible shape pattern they were actually able to make it pretty easily uh, as far as the volume of shape it's not that big a volume so they did some shrinking I think four or five shrinks and they popped up the shape they did some stretching and planishing and then they got ready to do the roll that's setting the arrangement so primary is always uh, doing the area value first that's what the flexible shape pattern tells you is the area value and the gauges give you the arrangement value the bending of it so you have to get the area value first so they got the area value really nice the panels were chrome plate like and they tried to bend this this is 063 3003 aluminum and they hadn't annealed it and it was pretty stiff so they were having a little trouble getting this to roll over properly the way you roll it over is I have these little uh, post dollies that I put in these little post dolly haul holders and you can slap it over with a slapper with a leather face on it so they were doing okay but they made a few little mistakes so I suggested I says well you know why don't we do this you guys got some time I'll show you how to make a nice form tool for making this front edge so instead of using the slappers and really carefully checking with the gauges I suggested we use this form tool so I had to make the form tool and that is the way most of the, the people that are making these e-type bonnets around the world they are making them with a, a complete solid surface form tool essentially so uh, it makes it a lot easier if you're doing multiples now they weren't in any big hurry or anything to get this thing done so they were more than willing to make the form tools this is the form tool which was molded this is a an idea I came up with years ago too this if you see in the pictures is all the wire form internally essentially it's like reinforced uh, concrete with the steel inside it and, and it originally uh, we intended it to um, put in my one inch uh, post dolly sockets but I didn't like the angle so I just made a modification I added this piece of angle iron and now we can put that piece of angle iron here so I added that angle iron and now this is a much more user friendly I've got it up tall here so it's right up by my eyes and I can see it uh, what we did find that uh, without annealing this edge it was a little stiff getting it over so I uh, had Rich and Nate both anneal their front edges at first they didn't get the annealing proper so they didn't really get it really good and soft so uh, you gotta make sure and tomorrow we'll cover or the next uh, part we'll, we'll cover uh, annealing properly when we start working the aluminum panel uh, which will be part three this is part two right now so this is now in a real user-friendly position and we put that like that right there and you can see we can clamp here and we can use a nice leather face slapper and we can set that arrangement that's exactly what the guys that are commercially making these are doing they're making sure that they conform to that desired shape now this was molded right out from the inside of that hood which is undamaged and it looks like that we'll probably have to make one here also we don't have to but I probably will I'll mold one out from inside here again it's throwing uh, cleaning it up a bunch throwing a, um, a mold release which I use a heavy wax to do that and then we fit in quarter inch hot roll wires MIG weld it all together They'd probably put four or five wires in there and then have a couple stands and legs for it to support itself so it makes it in a user-friendly situation and uh, after you get uh, all the wires done first you put a big heavy coat of of that uh, reinforced bondo in there the waterproof bondo and then you plunge the wire form into it 
and then fill in backfill all the wire form right up to this lip and you get a perfect mold after about 10 minutes it's all set Boop, it just pops out because the wax releases it usually there'll be some air pockets you might have to fix and stuff no big deals so we'll have uh, both molds for both of these we'll have the flexible shape pattern so we can make these if we want to in the future yeah it's racialine keep the comments coming and thanks for watching please subscribe and we'll check you back on part three we'll really get into the metal work in part three thank you